Hello dear students, so today we have UPSC CSAT 2019 question paper with us and uh, this paper was really a damage control kind of thing because in 2018 the paper was really tough. 2018 paper was tough. So this time this paper was not tough. They have tried to maintain a balance between the different different topics and they have tried to make a balance of the difficulty level of the questions also. So here if I would talk about the difficulty level of the question then I would say it was easy to moderate question paper and some questions are actually very easy also and uh, some questions are easy and some questions are moderate and uh, in in so many questions here just by assuming a right value you can find the answer I will be telling about the questions also when I will be solving them and here they have given approx 50 plus questions of maths and reasoning and uh, the level of the question is not that tough, right? And here one more thing, they have tried to make a balance between all the topics of the questions of maths and reasoning. And here they have introduced one new topic also that is data sufficiency, which they have never asked before. So uh, I can say this paper was a good balance, good mix and match of the different different topics. And yes, last year DI was really tough. I mean in 2018 DI was really tough. So this time they have removed DI. Uh, and uh, they have tried to make a balance actually. So let's start with the questions. Okay. First question says every alternative letter of English alphabet from B onwards. B, B means second alphabet, right? So from second onwards, including B is written in lower case. So it means what every even letter is written as lower case and every odd lettered alphabet is written in upper case or capital letter. So we have this coding with us E J O T right E J O T tells us the positioning of alphabets. So this is fifth, this is 10th, this is 15th, 20th and 25th. So E stands like E is what E's position is fifth, J's position is 10th, O's position is 15th. T's position is 20th and Y's position is 25th. So after that, then how is the first month of the second half of the year is written? Second half of the year. Second half of the year is what? July to December. So first month of the second half. It means how July is written in that code. This is the question. So July is what? July. J-U-L-Y. So obviously Y is 25th. J is 10th. T. T-U. It means U is 21st. L is what? J, K, L. L is 12th. So there are two odd letters and two even letters word. So J will be like small. U will, will be capital. L is even. So L will be small. And Y will be capital. So July will be written like this. Okay. So which option is there? So this is D option. Right everybody? So D option is the correct choice. So correct answer is D option. Okay, everyone fine. This is again a very simple. I mean, this is a very simple question of uh, coding decoding, right? So now let's talk about the next question. Okay. Next question says, Sunita cuts a sheet of paper into three pieces. Okay, length of the first piece is equal to the average of the first three single digit odd prime numbers odd prime numbers 2 is also a prime number but 2 is an even prime number so single digit odd prime numbers are 3 5 7 the length of the first piece is equal to the average of the three single digit odd prime numbers so average of these three number is what average is 5 so this is the average so if this is the average then obviously this is the length of the first sheet so this is the length of the first sheet okay in fact, not first sheet, first piece. Okay, because she is cutting the sheet into three pieces. So length of the first piece is this. Okay, fine. Now, length of the second piece is equal to that of the first plus one third of the length of the third. Okay, what is third? We don't know. So let us assume. So let the length of the third. Length of third is equal to what is equal to x so length of the second is equal to length of the first plus one third of the third so this is second fine 
Okay. Now, the third piece is as long as the other two pieces together. Okay, so third is as long as the other two pieces together. It means what? First is what? 5. Second is what? Second is this. 5 plus x by 3. So first and second together is equal to third. Third is what? x. So this is 10 plus x by 3 is equal to x. So 10 is equal to what? 2x by 3. This implies x is what 5 into 3 this implies x is equal to 15 so the length of the third is 15 units right so this is the third piece okay this is third piece so first piece is 5 units and the third piece is 15 unit 15 units right now we need to find the length of the second piece so second piece is what second piece is here 5 plus x by 3 so second piece is 5 plus x is what x is equal to 15 so second is 5 plus 15 by 3 so 5 plus 5 so length of the second is what 10 units right this is the length of the second okay everyone so length of the second piece is equal to 10 units right now what is the question question is the length of the original sheet of the paper so original sheet of the paper is what original sheet of the paper is 5 plus 10 plus 15 so this is the length of the first this is the length of the second and this is the length of the third piece so 5 plus 10 plus 15 this is equal to the original length so original length is what 30 units right everyone so what is the answer the answer is the correct choice is d option so the length of the total sheet is equal to 30 units all right so this is the answer okay everyone so the correct answer is 30 units now let's talk about the next question next question says in the sequence 157 357 4357 how many fives are such which are not immediately preceded by 3 but are immediately followed by 7 okay so we have how many fives 1 5 2 5 and 3 5 and all the fives are immediately followed by 7 and these two fives are immediately preceded by 3 also so only one five is there which is immediately followed by 7 but not preceded by 3 so correct answer is a option okay everyone the correct answer is we have only one five which is not immediately preceded by 3 but immediately followed by 7 right the correct option is a we have only one such 5 okay this is a very simple question here we just need to observe the given data carefully that's it okay it's a very simple question everybody should try this question okay now let's talk about the next one next question says a joint family consists of seven members a b c d e f and g with three females okay three females and obviously four males are there in the family g is a widow everyone g is a widow and sister-in-law of d's father f b and d are siblings and a is daughter of b c is the cousin of b who is e okay okay so let's draw the diagram let's draw the family tree question says g is a widow g is a widow means what g is a female okay and sister-in-law of d's father f and sister-in-law of d's father f sister-in-law of f it means what g's sister g's sister is married to f and f is male right everyone g's sister is married to f f is male okay and f is d's father so f is d's father okay fine now b and d are siblings so b and d are in the same generation b and d are the siblings and they are the i mean uh, they are the uh, i mean their parents is their father is f fine okay and a is daughter of b a is daughter of B. A is daughter of B means what? A is female. Okay. See, everybody, 
Initially, the question says there are three females in the family. So three females. So one female is G, another female is A, and here the female character will will be coming because she is the wife of F, right? So this is the female one. So obviously now all the male mem now all the rest males. I mean all the rest members are the male. So it means D is male, B is also male. Now C is a cousin of B. The further data is C is the cousin of B. C is the cousin of B means what? C and B are in the same generation, and obviously M will be a male. So now only one character is left, which is E. So E will be coming over here, right? So E is what? E is female, and F and E are married couple, and their children are B and D because B and D are sim siblings, right? I repeat, E and F are married couples, and their children are B and D. Fine. Obviously, they both are male, so they both are son of uh, B and D. Sorry, they both are son of E and F. Fine. And now the question is, who is E? So the first, uh, first statement is wife of F. Yeah, it is correct. E is wife of F. It is correct. Okay, grandmother of A. Fine. So obviously. E is what? E is the mother. E is the mother of B, and B is father of A. So obviously, A is the granddaughter of E. So we can say E is the grandmother of A, right? E is the grandmother of A. It is correct. Aunt of C. Yeah, this is also correct because C is the cousin of B. So obviously, E will be aunt of C. So all the I mean, select the correct answer using the quotes given below. All the quotes are correct, right? All the relations are correct. Okay, everyone, fine. All the relations are correct. This is a good question of blood relation. So now let's move to another question. Next question says, each face of a cube can be painted in black or white color. Okay. In how many different ways can the cube be painted? Okay, a cube has six faces, right? There are six faces in a cube. If a face can be painted either black or white, so obviously we can have these many arrangements. So it can be zero black face, all six are white. It can be one black face, five faces are white. Or it can be two faces black, four faces are white. It can be three faces black, three faces white. It can be four faces black, two faces white. It can be five faces black, one case, one face white. Or it can be six faces black or zero face white. Right. So now these are the, I mean, uh, these are the possible ways. Fine. Now this every way can be performed in how many manners? This also we need to take care of. Right. So suppose that. We are painting the cube in this manner: zero black, and all the faces are white. So obviously, this can be done only in one way, right? So all the faces will be painted white. And similarly, this is this is also the case, which can be done in only one one way, right? All the faces will be painted black, right? Now, here, if all the faces, I mean, sorry, if one face is painted black and all others are white. So this can also be done in one way only, right? This is also can be done in one way only, right? Okay. Now let's talk about four faces white and two faces black. This can be done in two ways, right? This can be done in two ways. How come? First and second. Two black faces may be opposite to each other. Right. Two black faces may be opposite to each other. Or they may be adjacent to each other. They may be adjacent each other right so this can be done in two ways similarly this also can be done in two ways right when 
four faces are black and two faces are white. This also can be done in two ways, right? Okay, clear? Now, now let's talk about this three phase black and three phase white, right? This also can be done in two ways. Three faces black and three faces are white. This also can be done in two faces, right? So, first way and the second way, right? So now how they can be done? Let me tell you. First, all the three will be in in one corner. All the three black will be in any one of the corners. Right? This is the first way. Right? Or the second manner is, the second manner is, two of them will be opposite and one is in between. Two of them will be opposite. Opposite to each other. And another will be in between another will be in between right so this can this case can also be performed in two ways right so now we just need to count all the ways so 1 2 then 2 2 2 6 6 to 8 8 and 1 9 9 and 1 10 right so total we have total we have 10 ways to paint the cube right so the correct answer is b choice right b option is the correct one total we have 10 ways to paint the cube right so everyone this is a good question but in the examination uh, i won't suggest you to to solve this question if you haven't gone through these type of questions like earlier right if you are very new to these type of questions please don't solve this question in the examination Right, everyone? I repeat, if you are very new to these type of questions, please don't solve this question in the examination, right? I mean, if you're not familiar with these type of questions, so please don't solve this question in the, exa in the examination because this will take a lot of time of your. Right, everybody? Fine. So let's talk about the next question. Next question says, how many triplets x, y, z satisfy the equation x plus y plus z is equal to 6 where x, y and z are natural numbers right so the sum of three natural numbers is equal to six right natural numbers are what natural numbers like they start with one one two three four five up to infinite right they are natural numbers right and here the sum of three natural numbers is equal to six right so those numbers can be i mean they can be equal also they can be distinct also right because here nothing has been said about the numbers like whether they are distinct or they are same fine so case one if we talk about all the numbers are same right so if all of them are same then only one way is possible which is 2 plus 2 plus 2 is equal to 6 right so value of x is also 2 value of y is also 2 and value of z is also 2 right so only one way okay now case two when two of them are same two of them are same okay so x y z so if two of them are same then one one and four right so one four one right and four one one right so one plus four plus one i mean it is equal to six order does not matter so they can i mean 4 can be here, 4 can be here, or 4 can be here. Okay, fine. So now total how many ways? Total there are 3 ways when 2 numbers are same, right? When all are different, case 3, all are distinct. Okay, alright. So x, y, z, if I talk about 1, 2, 3. 
right? So 1 plus 2 plus 3 is equal to 6, right? So now fix the 1 and swap 2 and 3. So this becomes another way, right? Now please fix the 2, right? 2, 1, 3, 2, 3, 1, right? Now fix 3. So 3, 1, 2, 3, 2, 1, right? So how many ways? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So 6 ways are here, right everyone? So total 6 plus 3 plus 1. So how many ways are possible? 10, right? So 10, 10 triplets are there where they will satisfy the equation x plus y plus z is equal to 6. So correct answer is option number D, right? Friends, this is the question of permutation and combination. But here I'm not going to use any formula of permutation and combination. I'm solving this question with thinking only, right? So just try to solve this question with the layperson's approach just by thinking only, right? This is a simple question, okay? Let's talk about the another one, okay? Next question says, if dollar means divided by, add the rate means multiplied by, hash means minus, then find the value of the given expression, okay? So first of all, please rewrite the equation Now, put all the symbols, hash means, hash means minus, add the rate means multiply, dollar means what, dollar means divided by, right. So this expression becomes what, actually we will be following board mass rule over here, board mass is what, bracket of division, multiplication, addition and subtraction, right, this is the order that we follow. So this expression becomes 10 minus 5 into 1 by 5, right? 5, 5 get cancelled. So this becomes 10 minus 1. So which is what? Which is 9, right? So the answer is 9, right? Everybody, this is a very simple question of GMA, right? General mental ability. Okay, this is a very, very simple question, right? Everyone should try this question. Okay, now let's move to other question okay an eight digit number four two five two seven four six p leaves remainder zero when it is divided by three friends when a number is divided by three leaves a remainder zero means what it means the number is divisible by three this line leaves remainder zero when divided by three it means what it means this number is divisible by three right okay and if a number is divisible by 3 then what is the divisibility rule of 3 divisibility rule of 3 is what sum of the digits sum of digits will be sum of digits will be a multiple of 3 right sum of digits will be a multiple of 3 okay right now just add all the digits 4 plus 2 plus 5 plus 2 plus 7 plus 4 plus 6 plus p. Right, just add all the digits. Okay. So 4, 2, 6, 6 plus 5, 15. Sorry, 6 plus 5, 11. 11 plus 2, 13. 13 plus 7, 20. 20 plus 4, 24. Plus 6 is 30. So the sum becomes 30 plus p. Right. So now if the given number is a multiple of 3, then 30 plus b has to be the multiple of 3, right? So what is the least choice for b we have? 30 plus b has to be the multiple of 3. Here 30 is like 30 itself is a multiple of 3. It means least possible choice for 0 can, least possible choice for b can be 0, right? Now add 3 to it, we will get the next number. So 3, add 3 to it, 6, and then add 3 to it, 9 right so here b can have i mean b can there are four values which are possible for b b can be 0 b can be 3 b can be 6 or b can be 9 right we have four possible values of b okay everyone fine so the correct answer is four values are possible right okay so what is the correct option 
the correct option is option C. Okay, everybody, right, four values are possible. Clear? It's a very simple question of divisibility, right? And obviously, like, we all are aware about the divisibility rule of three, right? It is a very simple one. Okay, fine. Now, let's talk about the next question. Okay. Next question is like a linked question for three items, right? Here, some data is given and three questions are based on the given information. Okay, everyone, fine. Now, please, let's read the information. Six students, A, B, C, D, E and F appeared in several tests. Either C or F scores the highest. Okay. C or F scores the highest. Okay, fine. Whenever C scores the highest, then E scores the least. Okay, when, whenever C scores the highest, then E scores the least. Whenever F scores the highest, B scores the least. Okay, fine. Alright. Now, in all the tests, they got different marks. Alright. D scores higher than A, but they are closed competitors. D scores higher than A, but they are closed competitors. It means they will be together. In this order, they will be together, right? D scores higher than A, that's why D is written upward, right? D scores higher than A and they are closed competitors. Okay, A scores higher than B. So below A, it will be B. A scores higher than B, right? C scores higher than A. C scores higher than A, fine. So let's say C scores higher than A, fine. So this is the general information. This is the common information for all the questions C, D, A, B, right? So everyone, I'm writing it here C, D, A, B, right? This is the common information for all the questions, fine. Okay, now let's talk about the question associated with this given information. Question is, if F stands second in the ranking, everyone, F stands second. If F stands second, it means what? It means C is the topper, right? So C is the topper. If C is the topper, then E scores the least, right? Okay, F stands second. Fine, so F stands second, right everyone? So like this is the order, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth, right? So now what is the question? Question is then the position of B. Position of B, position of B is what? Fifth. Okay, everyone. So position of B is fifth. So correct option is C option, right? Okay, everyone here for all the questions, we have to carry this information, C, D, A, B, right? We have to carry this information for next question also, right? So now let's move to next question. Okay, so the given information is C, D, A, B and this C or F, C or F, uh, C scores the highest, then E scores the least, okay, F scores the highest, then B scores the least, right? So this is the general, inf general uh, information for all the questions, right? Now the next question is, if B scores the least, then the rank of C will be, B scores the least, okay, fine. So C, D, A, B scores the least. If B scores the least, then F is topper, right? So if F is topper, then E can be here, or if F is topper, then E can be here also, right? So there are two possibilities are there, right? Fine, so there are two arrangements, okay, fine. Now what is the question? Rank of C, rank of C, uh, here it is third, right, and here it is second, right. So rank of C can be second or rank of C can be third. Okay, everyone, fine. So second or third is the correct answer, right, D option. Okay, everyone, fine. All right, so now let's move to other question. Other question is what? Other question is, if E ranked third, then which one of the following is correct? Okay, fine. So first of all, the same information, C, D, A, B, we need to carry, right? F 
or C. When F scores the least, uh, sorry, F scores the highest, B scores the least. When C scores the highest, E scores the least. Okay, fine. Now, C, D, A, B. Okay. Now, the uh, question is, if E ranked third, E is the third ranker. Okay. So, everyone, if E is the third ranker, it means E is not, not least, right? If E is not least, it means C is not the topper. It means who is the topper? B is the topper. Sorry, uh, F is the topper and B is the least ranker, right? F is the topper and B is the least ranker. Okay, F is the topper. If F is the topper, question is saying E ranked third. Okay, E ranked third. If E ranked third, it means F is the topper, C is the second ranker, E is the third ranker, right? It is like this. Right, everyone? This is like this. Okay, fine. Now, which one of the following is correct? E gets more marks than C? No. C gets more marks than E? C gets more marks than E. Yes, this is the correct answer. Right, everybody? C gets more marks than E. Right? Okay. A ranked fourth? No. D ranked fifth? No right second option is the correct choice right everybody fine so correct answer is b all right so friends uh, my personal recommendation is you need to solve these type of questions why because there are three questions which are associated with the single information right so so only once we need to process the given data and we can we can get three questions out of it right so obviously it is always uh, recommendation uh, recommended to solve these type of questions right okay fine now let's talk about the next question. This question says, what is the x, what is x in the sequence, right? We need to find the value of x, fine, in the sequence. So here this is the gap of what? Gap of 3. Here this is the gap of 5, right? So here I mean negative 5, right? Here this is the gap of 7. And here this is the gap of 11, right? And here the gap of the gap of 13. So obviously, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, they are what? They are consecutive prime numbers, right? So they are consecutive prime numbers. 3, 5, 7, 11, 13. So next would be what? Next would be 17, right? So here, 93 minus 17 will be the next number, right? So 93 minus 17 is what? 76, right everyone? So correct answer is 76. C option is the right choice, right? Everybody, it's a very simple question, right? So in this type of question, first approach should be what? We should take the difference of consecutive terms, right? This is the first approach and this question, like uh, this question was solved with this approach only, right? So anyways, now let's talk about the next question. Okay, next question says, a wall clock moves 10 minutes fast in every 24 hours. All right. The clock was set right to show the correct time at 8 a.m. on Monday. All right. When the clock shows the time 6 p.m. on Wednesday, what is the correct time? Okay, fine. So 10 minutes fast in every 24 hours. Right. So 8 a.m. on Monday, it set, it was set right. So 8 a.m. on Monday. All right, so 8 a.m. on Tuesday and then 6 p.m. on Wednesday. All right, so 8 a.m. on Wednesday and then 6 p.m. on Wednesday, right? 6 p.m. on Wednesday. Okay, fine. So, this is what? This is 24 hours. Right? This is again 24 hours. This is what? This is next. Uh, next 10 hours, right? Fine. So, for this 24 hours, the clock will gain 10 minutes. Right? So, again in 24 minutes, it will gain 10 minutes more. Right? So now what about these 10 hours, right? So it gains in 24 hours, 
it gains 10 minutes right so in 10 hours it gains 10 by 24 into 10 right so it will gain around 4 hours approx right approx 4 minutes i'm sorry not 4 hours approx 4 minutes right approx because this this will be like 4.16 something right so 4 more minutes right so total the clock will gain 24 minutes i mean this time the clock will be 24 minutes faster than the usual time right so the clock is showing 6 pm question says the clock is showing 6 pm right so obviously the clock is 24 minutes faster than the actual time so we need to subtract we need to subtract 24 minutes right from this 6 so this is what we take one carry so obviously 60 will be coming over here because this is hours and this is minutes right so one hour will be coming to minutes so 60 will be coming here because one hour is equal to 60 minutes right so this will become 60 minutes 60 minutes minus 24 minutes so this will become 36 and this is 5 5 minus 0 is 5 right so actual time is 5 36 pm but the clock is showing 24 minutes faster so clock is showing 6 pm right so actual time will be 5 36 pm right a option is the right choice okay everyone fine this is a simple one right based on the unitary method only right okay now let's move to another question next question says if the numerator and denominator of a proper fraction are increased by the same positive quantity which is greater than zero the resultant fraction the resulting fraction is okay fine friends here we have one term which is proper fraction proper fraction means what proper fraction means denominator is greater than the numerator this is called proper fraction proper fraction means denominator greater than the numerator right for example for example 2 by 3 5 by 9 right these are proper fraction okay now let's say we have a proper fraction 2 by 3 with us and we are adding 3 to both numerator and denominator right so 2 by 3 plus 3 by 3 so this becomes 5 by 6 right now the original value of 2 by 3 is what 0. 0.6666 hmm? and what about 5 by 6 5 by 6 is 0. 0.8 right 0. 0.83 something 0. 0.833 right everyone fine so obviously here 5 by 6 is greater than 2 by 3 right now let us try with one more fraction let's say 5 by 9 5 by 9 so original value of 5 by 9 is what 0.5555 right now just add 3 to both numerator and denominator so this will become what this will become 8 by 12 8 by 12 is what 2 by 3 so value of 2 by 3 is what 0. 0.6666666 right so obviously 5 by 9 is actually less than 8 by 12 right so 8 by 12 is greater than 5 by 9 right so here the new fraction is always greater than the original fraction right is always greater than the original fraction right everyone fine okay it's a very simple question we can solve this question just by taking some counter examples right it's a very simple question okay now let's try another one okay next question is what is x in the sequence fine see everyone here all the numbers 4 196 16 144 36 164 they all are perfect square right so 4 196 16 144 36 100 64 and x they all are perfect square right this is what this is 2 square this is what this is 14 square this is what this is 4 square right this is what this is 12 square this is what this is 6 square this is 10 square this is 8 square right so everyone this series is what this is actually a mixed series which is the combination of two sequence 2 4 6 
8 and 10 right so next would be 10 square right now this is what 14 12 then 10 so 2, two is getting less all the time 14 minus 2 is 12 12 minus 2 is 10 10 minus 2 will be what 10 minus 2 will be 8 so this number will be 8 square so 8 square is equal to x which is equal to what 64 right so x is equal to 64 this is the answer b option is the correct choice right everyone fine this is the mixed series which is a combination of two alternative sequences right okay now let's talk about the another question so let's talk about the next question in a group of 15 people seven can read french eight can read english while three of them can read neither of these two languages okay so three of them are reading neither of the two languages it means what this data is what this data is talking about only 12 people right so 12 of them are reading these two languages fine so seven can read french eight can read english everyone if we add seven plus eight it will become 15 right but total we have only 12 people with us right so 15 minus 12 this is 3 right so it means what 3 reading both the languages right 3 reading both let me show you through Venn diagram this is French this is English right and this is the common area this is the area which belongs to both the both the languages right so three of them are reading both the languages right so three is here what about French seven can read French right so seven can read French so out of those seven actually this is the oval of French so ideally seven people should be coming over here three we already have so now we are left with four people right and similarly this is the oval of English so eight can read English right so eight people should be coming over here three we already have so we are left with five right we are left with five okay so total I mean now this is what this is 4 plus 3 plus 5 so now this is total 12 right so uh, I have already told you we are talking about the total 12 candidates right so now what is the question question is the number of people who can read exactly one language see everyone exactly one language so four people are there who can read exactly French and five people are there who can read exactly English right so 4 plus 5 total nine people are there who can read exactly one language right so nine the answer is nine correct option is B this is a very simple question which belongs to Venn diagram topic right okay everyone a simple question that belongs to Venn diagram correct right a simple question all right everyone so now let's talk about the next one first question says a printer numbers the pages of a book starting with one and uses three zero eight nine digits in all okay how many pages does the book have all right see everyone printer uses three zero eight nine digits in all right now when we writing from one to nine how many digits we use so when we write from one to nine we actually we use nine digits only right after that let's talk about a two digit number so two digit number starts from 10 and go up to 99 right so these are how many numbers these are actually 90 numbers right these are actually 90 numbers and every number is consuming two digits right so total how many digits we are consuming over here we are consuming 180 digits when we write from 10 to 99 okay so and after that if I talk about 100 to 999 100 to 999 how many numbers are there these are 900 numbers right everyone these are 900 numbers and every number is consuming three digits of your right so we are actually consuming 2700 digits when we write when we write from 100 to 999 okay so everybody if we have written from 1 to 999 we have actually consumed how many digits let me add all of them so we have actually consumed 2889 2889 digits in all right 
and how many digits we total have we total have 3089 i mean 3089 3, digits we total used so 3089 minus 2889 so this is actually 2000 sorry 200 digits so it means we are now left with 200 digits and we are now going to write from 1000 onwards okay everyone we are now going to write from 1000 onwards and in 1000 it is a four digit number right so from 1000 onwards every number is going to consume four digits so far and we are left with 200 digits so 200 digits divided by four so actually 50 more numbers 50 more numbers we can write 50 numbers 50 more numbers we can write after 999 right so obviously how many pages does the book have the book have 999 plus 50 right these many pages so the book is having 1049 pages right everyone the book has 1049 pages okay everyone the correct answer is C in the book total we have 1049 pages right it's a simple question but yes we need to think logically right and this is a set type of question of number system UPSC asks these type of questions in almost uh, almost in every year in UPSC right okay fine so now let's talk about the next question okay consider the following sequence that follows some arrangement right everyone in these type of questions there is no set rule right we need to put all the options and we just need to check all the options right so here when you are going to put b option this will give you some pattern right so for these type of questions there is no rocket science you have to put all the options separately right and uh, from which option like this this series is giving uh, obviously like out of these four one option will be there where we are getting some uh, like definite arrangement fine so that will be considered as the answer right so i'm not going to solve this question i'm leaving this question on you right the correct answer is b okay now let's try the next question okay next question says a family has two children along with their parents fine the average weights of the children and their mother is 50 kg two children right so child one child two and mother right so the average is 50 kg so obviously the sum of their weights will be what sum of their weights will be 50 into 3 that is 150 kg right everyone so c1 plus c2 plus m i mean child 1 plus child 2 plus mother is equal to 150 kg right this is equation number one right now let's talk about the another information the average of the weights of the children and their father is 52 kg okay so child 1 plus child 2 plus father is equal to 52 into 3 so the sum of them will be 156 right so second equation is c1 plus c2 plus father is equal to 156 right this is equation number 2 right so now please try to solve equation 1 and equation 2 right so when we are going to solve equation 1 and equation 2 you will be getting father minus mother is equal to 150 sorry is equal to 6 kg right father minus mother is equal to 6 kg i mean the weight of the father is 6 kg more than the weight of mother right question is saying if the weight of father is 60 kg okay so just put the value of father over here 60 minus mother is equal to 6 this implies m is equal to what 60 minus 6 which is 54 kg right so weight of the mother is 54 kg right everyone the correct option is option number d weight of the mother is 54 kg right okay now let's try to move to the next question let's talk about the next question a started from his house and walked 20 meter towards east okay so let me draw the direction north south east and west right so a started 
from his house and walk 20 meter towards east okay let's say this is 20 meters towards east okay where his friend b joined him and they together walked 10 meter in the same direction okay fine so 10 meter more in the same direction all right then a turn left a turn left means upward and b turned right okay it means downward so a is here and b is here right traveled two and eight respectively okay so traveled two and eight respectively okay fine again b turned left okay fine so b turned left here and traveled four right so b turned left and traveled four meter followed by five meter 5 meter to his right okay followed by 5 meter to his right so 5 meter to his right okay to reach his office okay fine so this is office of b office of b okay right after that what a turned right and traveled 12 meter to reach his office okay a turned right and traveled 12 12 kilometers 12 kilometers means see this is what this is actually 8 sorry this is 4 right so this is 4 and he's reach he's like moving 12 fine so 4 is here so 8 will be here right so total he is traveling 12 to reach his office so this is office of a okay fine all right now what is the question what is the shortest distance between the two offices okay fine so we need to join the two offices first we need to find this distance right everyone we need to find this distance this is the shortest distance fine so obviously this line we need to join so this is what this is actually let's say this is p point right so p a b this is let's say a final position of a and this is the final position of b so p a b is a right angled triangle right and this is what this is 2 and this is 8 and this is 5 right so total this length would be what p b will be what 15 units right or 15 meter sorry so p b will be 15 meter P A will be 8 meter, right? We need to find A B. Okay. So A B is what? 15 square plus 8 square to the under root. So 15 square is what? 225. 8 square is 64. This will become under root 289, which is 70 square, right? So it means A B is equal to 17 meters, right? Everyone, fine. So the correct answer is 17 meters, right? This is a simple question of Pythagoras theorem. But yes, here, uh, this question is actually a bit lengthy. So we need to be alert while solving this question, right? So yes, this is the question where we need to be very alert and attentive. All right. Okay, fine. So let's move to another one. The question says, consider two statements S1 and S2 followed by a question. Okay. Statement number S1. First statement says P and Q both are prime numbers. Okay. So two prime number can be chosen as 2, 3 or 3, 5 or let's say 17, 19 or anything. Right. Okay. And statement 2. P plus Q is an odd integer. Right. Sum of two integers is an odd integer. It means what? One has to be the odd and one has to be even. So odd plus even is odd, right? So one of them is odd and one of them is even, right? So now let's talk about the question. Is PQ an odd integer? Okay, so when we talk about statement number S1, so S1 says PQ are 2, 3. So when they are 2, 3, so their product is 6. When they are 3, 5, then their product is 15, right? So here their product may be even or maybe odd also right so from a statement number s1 alone we are not getting a definite answer now let's talk about statement number s2 p plus q is an odd integer 
So obviously, if one odd integer will be multiplied with one even integer, then product will be an even integer, right? So from statement number S2, we are getting the definite answer. P into Q is not an odd integer. Fine. So obviously, statement number S2 alone will be sufficient to answer this question, right? So correct choice is option number B, right? Statement number S2 alone is sufficient to answer this question, right? All right. Now let's talk about question number two. Okay. Which year has the same calendar as that of 2009? Okay, everyone. So 2009, how many odd days are there in 2009? One. In 2010, how many odd days are there? One. In 2011, how many odd days are there? One. In 2012, how many odd days are there? Two. In 2013, how many odd days are there? One. In 2014, how many odd days are there? One. Right? So total, how many odd days we have? Like three, two, five, five, two, seven. Right? So seven odd days we have till 2014. Right? So obviously 2015, will be same as 2009 right everyone okay so 2015 will be same as 2009 so correct answer is d option and here this question is based on odd days concept and that we have discussed in detailed in one of our videos which is uploaded in this youtube channel only and the videos i mean the topic is calendar right so please go through that video you will get the grasp of this topic right everybody Okay, fine. Now let's talk about the next question. Okay, next question says number 136 is added to 5B7 and the sum obtained is 7A3. Okay, 136, 5B7 and the sum obtained is 7A3. Alright, where A and B are integers. It is given that 7a3 is exactly divisible by 3. Okay, 7a3, if 7a3 is exactly divisible by 3, it means what? 10 plus a has to be a multiple of 3. Right, everyone? So, a can be what? a can be 2, a can be 5, or a can be 8. Right? 10 plus 2 is 12, 10 plus 5 is 15, 10 plus 8 is 18. Right? Why? Because the if a number is divisible by 3, then obviously the sum of digits has to be the multiple of 3. So it means a can be either 2 or 5 or 8, right? So now, now everyone, just talk about the question. This is what? 6 plus 7 is 13. 13, 3 is written over here and 1 goes to carry, right? So three, 1 plus 3, 1 plus 3 is 4. 4 plus b is equal to a, right? So now 4 plus b is equal to a right everyone fine so obviously and now if i talk about this column this column is 1 plus 5 1 plus 5 is 6 but it is written 7 over here it means what it means it means what the value which is coming over here means 4 plus b 4 plus b will be a two digit number right 4 plus b will be a two digit number right and B is what? B is a single digit number. Right? So B is a single digit number. Right? It means what? It means 4 plus B has to be 12. Right? It means 4 plus B has to be 12 only. Nothing else. Right? Because 4 plus B is 5, then B has to be 1. If 4 plus B is 8, then B has to be 4. Right? So obviously 4 plus b is 12, right? So 4 plus b is 12. So this is 2, 3 and b will be what? b will be 8, right everyone? b will be 8, okay? So we have the sum as 1, 3, 6, 5, 8, 7, right? So 6 plus 7 is 13. 8 plus 3 is 11, 11, 1, 12, 5, 1, 6, and then 7, right? So this is like this. Okay, everyone, fine. So the value of B, question is 6, then the only possible value of B, the answer is 8, right? The only possible value of B is 8, fine. Now let's talk about the next question. Okay, 
द नंबर ऑफ डिजिट्स क्वेश्चन इज द नंबर ऑफ टाइम्स द नंबर ऑफ टाइम्स द डिजिट फाइव विल एपियर वाइल राइटिंग द इंटीज फ्रॉम वन टू वन थाउजेंड इज ओके एवरी वन फ्रॉम वन टू वन थाउजेंड सो जस्ट टॉक अबाउट वन टू हंड्रेड राइट सो फ्रॉम वन टू हंड्रेड वेन वी राइट देन फाइव इज वॉट फाइव फिफ्टीन ट्वेंटी फाइव थर्टी फाइव फोर्टी फाइव एंड अप टू इट गोज टू नाइंटी फाइव राइट सो फ्रॉम जीरो फाइव वन फाइव टू फाइव टिल वी हैव नाइन फाइव सो इट मीन्स टेन टाइम्स फाइव इज एपियरिंग राइट ऑल राइट नाउ लेट्स टॉक अबाउट फिफ्टी 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 वन अप टू फिफ्टी नाइन राइट सो अगेन फ्रॉम जीरो टू वन टू फ्रॉम जीरो टू नाइन वी हैव राइट सो दिस इज अगेन टेन टाइम्स All right, everyone. This is again ten times. Fine. So when we write from one to hundred, we write five twenty times. Right? Okay. So how many slots do we have? So we have one to hundred. We have hundred one to two hundred. We have two hundred one to three hundred. Right. So, how many slots do we have till nine hundred one to one thousand? We have total ten slots, right? We have total ten slots, and in every slot we we are written five twenty times, right? In every slots we are written five twenty times, right? So this is what twenty into ten. This is two hundred, right? So two hundred times. And now one more, five hundred one to five hundred ninety nine. Right? How many numbers are there? In fact, not five hundred one, five hundred to five hundred ninety nine. I'm sorry, five hundred to five hundred ninety nine. How many numbers are there? They are hundred numbers. Right? So it means five is written hundred times here. Right? So total, how many times five do we have? We have two hundred plus hundred. So total, we have three hundred times. Okay, everyone, we have three hundred times five. Right. The correct answer is C option. All right, everyone. Here the correct answer will be C option. Right. This is a good example of number system. Right. so uh, we should be familiar with these type of questions to solve this question in the examination in less time right all right now let's talk about the next question this question says a solid cube is painted yellow blue and black such that opposite faces are of same color the cube is then cut into 36 cubes of two different sizes such that 32 cubes are small and other four cubes are big none of the faces of the bigger cube is painted blue how many cubes have only one face painted friends it is a very good question and to solve this question a very good imagination skill is required why because here the cutting pattern is not usual it is slight different than the usual pattern because all the sizes all the cubes are not of the same size right 32 cubes are small and four cubes are big right so the cutting pattern will be slight different so i am showing you the cutting pattern please try to observe it carefully right this is the cube and this is the cutting pattern right here in the top surface in the top face we have 16 cubes 16 small cubes right and in the bottom face we also have 16 small cubes fine and one big cube is this another big cube i mean one big cube will be like this right another big cube is this this another big cube is this okay this is number 2 right and another big cube is this and one more big cube will be at the back right at the back fine so we have total four big cubes and we have 16 small cubes in the top and 16 small cubes in the bottom right so total 32 cubes we have 
32 small cubes right and four big cubes right so this is the cutting pattern okay and everyone one more thing question is saying none of the faces of the bigger cube is painted blue i repeat none of the faces of the bigger cube is painted blue it means what it means all the all the small cubes have been cut from blue face right so it means what it means this top face will be blue and if top is blue then bottom will also be blue because uh, the same color are of opposite faces right so let's say this is yellow and this is let's say this this face this side face let's say this is black right though now it does not matter because we we almost have cracked the question so the color does not matter now but anyways we need to find the color also fine anyways uh, let's talk about the question question says how many cubes have only one face painted question says how many cubes have only one face painted right now friends if you talk about the corner one right the cornered cube this this cube is like situated in the corner so this will have three face painted right and this cube is on the edge this will have three two face painted fine this will also have two face painted this will also have two face painted fine so we will not take into consideration the cubes which we are situated in the corner and the cubes which we are which are situated in the uh, faces uh, uh, sorry edges right so edge and the corner these cubes won't be taken into consideration right now the center cube this this these four cubes will have only one face painted right hope you must be getting it right these four faces will have only one face painted right so four face at the bottom sorry four face at the top and four face at the bottom will have only one face painted it means eight total cubes will have only one face painted fine the correct answer is c option eight such cubes will be there which have only one face painted right so friends hope you enjoyed this question this question says a b a and b are two heavy steel blocks if b is placed on the top of a the weight increases by 60 percent how much weight will reduce with respect to the total weight of a and b if b is removed from the top of a okay so friends let's let's assume the weight of a is let's say 100 kg right the weight of a let's say 100 and b is placed on the top of it and the weight is increased by 60 percent so obviously b will be what b will be 60 kg if a is 100 kg then b will be 60 kg right so initial weight was 100 and now the total weight of a plus b becomes 160 right so initial weight was 100 now the weight becomes 160 this is first condition now the question is asking how much weight will reduced with respect to the total weight of a and b the total weight is 160 right if b is removed if b is removed right b is on the top if this is removed right so the total weight is 60 60 becomes 100 right obviously when b is removed then obviously the 60 kg will be reduced so now the left weight is 100 right so 160 becomes 100 so 60 kg weight reduced right so they are asking what percentage how much weight will reduce and answer is given all the options are given in the percentage only right so obviously we need to find how much percentage weight reduced right so 60 is reduced with respect to 160 so we need to find 60 is what percentage of 160 okay everyone fine so 3 and 8 so 300 by 8 which is 37.5 percent right so total weight reduced by 37.5 percent this is the answer okay everyone d option is the correct answer right 
this is a very simple question right okay now let, let's talk about the next one this question says mr x has three children the birthday of the first child falls on 5th monday of april 5th monday of april right everyone so it means what 5th monday can be on 29th april or 30th april right so if 5th monday is lying on 29th april then 1st april is sunday sorry 1st april is monday right or if it is lying on 30th of april then 2nd april will be monday right everyone so 1st april can be monday or 2nd april can be monday in this case right now the next information is that of the second one falls on 5th thursday of november so november is same as uh, april because both month have 30 days right so 5th th thursday of november means either 1st november is thursday or the 2nd november is thursday right okay now the question part is on which day is the birthday of his third child which falls on 20th december right everyone 20th december right so now let's talk about the odd days between april and november so april month has two odd days why because april has 30 days so 28 complete weeks plus two odd days right so april then may has three odd days because 31 days june has two odd days july 3 august 3 september 2 october 3 right so just add them 5 5 5 15 plus 3 18 right 18 odd days 18 odd days are equivalent to 4 odd days why because 18 will be divided by 7 so 18 will give you 14 plus 4 right so two complete weeks plus four extra days so these extra days will be considered as four odd days right so 18 odd days is equivalent to four odd days right so it means what first april right if first april is monday then after four days first november will lie right so if first april is monday then 1st November will be Monday plus 4 days so this is Friday right but 1st November can't be Friday why because if 1st November is on Friday then that November can't have 5 Thursdays right so this is not possible I repeat 1st November can't be Friday why because if 1st November is Friday then that November does not have five Thursdays, right? So this case is not possible. It means first, it means what? First April is Sunday and second April is Monday, right? And second April is Monday. This is the only possible case that 2nd April is Monday, right? So now if 1st April is Monday, then after 4 days, 1st November will lie, right? So after 4 days, 1st November. So 1st November will be Thursday, right? If 1st April is Sunday, then 1st November will be Thursday, right? So in this question, only this case can be taken into consideration, right? So here, 2nd April will be Monday and 1st November will be Thursday, right? Now, if 1st November will be on Thursday, then it means what? 29th November will also be on Thursday, right? Everyone, if 1st November is on Thursday, then 29th, after 28 days, 29th November will be there and that will again Thursday, right? Now, if 29th November is Thursday, then 1st December is what? 1st December is Saturday, right everybody? If 29th November is Thursday, then 1st December is Saturday, right? 1st December is Saturday means 15th December, like after 14 days, 15th December is also Saturday, everybody, okay? So 15th December, 15th December is Saturday, right? 
So now let's talk about the question. What the question is saying? Question is saying, on which day is the birthday of his third child, which falls on 20th December? See everyone, if 15th December is Saturday, then obviously 22nd December will also be on Saturday, right? After seven days, right? So just two days before, it will be 20th December, right? So this will be what? This will be Thursday. Everybody, okay? So 20th December will be Thursday, right? This is a very good question of calendar. And friends, for solving this type of question in the examination, we should be very much comfortable with the topic, right? Otherwise, this question will take a lot of time of your, right? Hope you enjoyed the solution. So let's talk about the next question. Next question says, consider the following statements and conclusion. Statement number one. Some rats are cats. Some rats are cats. Okay. Statement number two. Some cats are dogs. Okay. So some cats are dogs. Maybe like this. This is case number one. And case number two. Some rats are cats and some cats are dogs. So case number two like this. Right. Number three. No dog is cow. Number three, no dog is cow. Okay. So no dog is cow. Can be like cow can be here. Right. And no dog is cow. Cow can be here also. Right. So these are the two cases based on the given information. Right. Now let's talk about the conclusion. Conclusion number one, no cow is cat. So no cow is cat. We have some intersection between cow and cat in first case. So this case is not correct. I mean, this conclusion is not correct. Number two, no dog is rat. So in case number one, we have some dogs are rats, right? So this conclusion is not correct. Now let's talk about the third conclusion. Some cats are rats. Some cats are rats is, is possible in the first case and some cats are rats is possible in the second case also. In fact, it is given in the question also, right? Some cats are rats some rats are cats is given in the question also right so obviously this case is always correct i mean this conclusion is always correct right so which of the above conclusion is are drawn from the statements so only three right c option only three is correct nothing else right so c option right everybody so this is a very simple question but yes we should be comfortable in the topic syllogism right okay now let's talk about the next question the number of parallelogram that can be formed from a set of four parallel lines intersecting another set of four parallel lines. See everyone, it has a direct formula and this, this question based on the topic permutation and combination, the formula is 4C2 into 4C2, right? So 4C2 is what? 4C2 is 6 and 6. So 6 into 6 is 36, right? The answer is 36. Fine. So if you are comfortable enough with the permutation and combination, then only you can solve this question in the examination. Else, please leave this question because it is very difficult to like count all the parallelograms, right? So now let's talk about the next question. Okay. In a school, every student is assigned a unique identification number. A student is a football player if and only if the identification number is divisible by four, okay? Whereas a student is a cricketer if and only if the identification number is divisible by 6. Okay, 4 and 6. Fine. If every number from 1 to 100 is assigned to a student, then how many student, how many of them play cricket as well as football? So cricket as well as football. So obviously let's talk, uh, here they are talking about the LCM of 4 and 6. So LCM of 4 and 6 is what? 12, right? Okay. So 1 to 100 fine so we need to find from 1 to 100 how many students are assigned to a number which is a multiple of 12 right how many students are assigned to a number which is a multiple of 12 right so if a student is assigned to a number which is a multiple of 12 then that student will be a cricket as well as a football player right so till 100 how many numbers are multiple of 12 so 12 8 and 96 right so eight numbers are there, which are the multiple of 12 till 100, right? So on answer is eight. 
right? So it means it is 12, 24, 36, 48 and up to 96, right? Total eight numbers are there. Okay, everyone. So this is a very simple question based on LCM topic, right? Now let's talk about the next question. Next question says, when a runner was crossing the 12 kilometer mark, she was informed that she had completed only 80% of the race. Okay, so 80% of the race is equal to 12. So 100% of the race is equal to what? 12 by 18 to 100, right? So this is what, this is actually, this is actually um, 15, right? 15 kilometer. Okay, so how many kilometers was the runner supposed to run to run this event? Okay, so how many kilometer was the runner supposed to run? So obviously the race was of 15 kilometers, right? So obviously she was supposed to run 15 kilometers in this race, right everybody? It is a very simple question, like within uh, 10 seconds you can solve this question in the examination, right? Very simple question. Now let's move to another question. Okay. Next question says, Raju has 9000 with him and he wants to buy a mobile handset, but he finds that he has only 70% of the amount. So if 70% is equal to 9000, then 100% is equal to what? 100% is equal to 9000 divided by 75 into 100. Right. So this is 3, this is 4. So this is 12,000. Right. So obviously the actual cost of the mobile handset was 12,000. Right. Okay. But he find that he has only 75% of the amount required to buy the handset. Fine. Therefore he borrowed 2000 from his friend. So like if he is borrowing 2000, then he is having 11,000 rupees. Right. But still he short 1000 rupees. Right. Okay. Fine. Raju still does not have enough money to buy the handset. Yes, correct. Right. There's still 1000 is less. Right. It's a very simple question. Okay, everyone. A very simple question based on the percentage topic. Right. First option is the correct one. Okay. All right. Now let's talk about the next question. Right. Next question says in 2002, Minu's age was one third the age of Mira. Fine. Whereas in 2010, Minu's age was half the age of Mira. What is Minu's year of birth? Okay, everyone. See friends, in this question, we need to check all the options and we have to go through the options only because nothing has been given in this question, right? So let's talk about the options. Uh, there are two characters, Minu and Mira, right? So this is 2002 and this is 2010, right? So now if I talk about first option, 1992. So 19, uh, with, 19, with respect to 1992, Minu's age, question is saying Minu's year of birth, right? So Minu's age in 2002 was 10 years. So 2000, in 2002, Mira will be three times of uh, Minu's age because question is saying in 2002 Minu's age was one third the age of Mira, obviously, right? So Mira should be 30 years of age in 2002, right? Now after eight years in 2010, she will be 18 years and she will be 38. Fine. So question is saying whereas in 2002, sorry, 2010, Minu's age was half of the age of Mira, right? So 18 is not the half of 38. Right, everyone? 18 is not the half of 38. Fine. So this data is not correct. So 1992 is not correct, right? So please remove this data from here. Now let's talk about the another option, 1994. Fine. So if Minu's year of birth is 1994, then in 1994, Minu will be what? Eight years of age. So Mira has to be 24 years of age. Why? Because she will be three times age of Minu, right? Okay. Now, after eight years, she will be 16 years of age and she will be what? 32 years of age, right? So, yeah, this data like matches the given uh, condition of the question, right? Because here, uh, this, this is double and this is three times, right? Correct. So here in 2002, 
Minu is one third of Mira's age, and in 2010, Minu is half the Mira's age. Fine. Okay. So everybody, the correct answer is 1994. Right. It's a very good question. I mean, a simple question, but really, it needs a smartness to solve this question. Fine. Okay. Now let's talk about the next one. Fine. Next question says Rakesh and Rajesh together bought ten balls and ten rackets. Rakesh spent thirteen hundred and Rajesh spent fifteen hundred. So thirteen hundred plus fifteen hundred is what? This is twenty eight hundred, right? So ten balls and ten rackets. They have spent twenty eight hundred bucks. Fine. So just divide all. Just divide the entire equation by ten. You will get ball plus racket is equal to two eighty. Two eighty, right? So price of a ball and a racket is equal to two eighty rupees. Fine. Now the question is saying each racket cost three times as the ball does. Okay, fine. So racket and ball ratio is what three is to one. Fine. So just divide two eighty in the ratio three is to one. So this will be two hundred ten and seventy, right? So the cost of the racket is two hundred ten. And the cost of the ball is seventy, right? Hope you are comfortable with the ratio. Hope you all know how to divide a number in the given ratio. Fine. Or if you don't know, then let me tell you. So two eighty by three plus one four into three is two hundred ten, and two eighty divided by four into one is equal to seventy, right? This is the process to divide a number in the given ratio. Fine, everyone. This is this four is what this four is the sum of the ratio terms, which is three plus one, right? Okay, fine. So now let's talk about the next question. Hope uh, you got this question. This is actually a very simple question, right? Now let's talk about the next one. Next question says, in a conference, out of total hundred participants, seventy are Indians. If sixty of the total participants are vegetarian, then which of the following statement is are correct? Okay. So everyone. In this question, seventy sorry, hundred participants are there in a conference. Out of that, seventy are Indians, right? Seventy are Indian, and thirty non-Indians, right? Okay. Now, sixty of the total participants are vegetarian. So, case number one: If we assume all the sixty Indian participants are vegetarian, right? So, if all the sixty Indian are vegetarian. Then ten Indian will be non-vegetarian, right? And all the thirty non-Indians will be non-vegetarian, right? So this is case number one, right? Now let's talk about case number two. There are hundred participants, seventy Indian, thirty non-Indian, right? In case number two, we are assuming that all thirty non-Indian are vegetarian. In case number two, we are assuming that all thirty non-Indian are vegetarian. It means what? The left thirty, because total sixty candidates are vegetarian, so obviously thirty non-Indian are vegetarian. Then thirty Indian will be vegetarian. So forty Indian will be non-vegetarian. Right. So this is case number two. Fine, everyone. So this is case number one, and this is case number two based on the given information. Right. Now let's talk about the question. At least thirty Indian participants are vegetarian. Conclusion number one: At least thirty Indian participants are vegetarian. Okay, so here thirty Indians are vegetarian, and here sixty Indians are vegetarian. So obviously, at least thirty Indians are vegetarian. Fine. At least thirty Indians are vegetarian. This case is correct. Now, case two: At least ten Indian participants are non-vegetarian. Fine. So here ten Indian are non-vegetarian. And here, third, here, forty Indians are non-vegetarian. I repeat, here, ten Indians are vegetarian. Sorry, non-vegetarian. But here, forty Indians are non-vegetarian. It means what? At least ten Indian, at least ten Indians are non-vegetarian, right? So second case is also correct, right? So here, both one and two, all the two cases are correct, right? So C option is the right one. Okay, everyone, this is a very good question of reasoning, right? So now let's talk about the next question. The question is a five-storied building with floors from one to five is painted using four different colors, and only one color is used to paint a floor. Okay, consider the following statements: the middle three floors are painted in different colors, the second and fourth floors are painted in different colors, the first and the fifth floors are painted red. 
The question is to ensure that any two consecutive floor have different colors. All right. See everybody. If I talk about third statement, in third statement, they are saying first and fifth floor are being painted red. first second third fourth and fifth right so fifth is being painted red and first is also being painted red right total we have used four colors right four different colors right so till now we have used only one color so now three floors are left so obviously these three floors will be painted with three different colors right so obviously two consecutive floor will be having different colors so only statement number three is sufficient to ensure that any two consecutive floors have different colors right so only three statement only statement number three is sufficient to answer this question right everyone b option is the correct choice right now let's talk about the next question okay next question says p q r the three towns the distance between p and q is 60 kilometer whereas the distance between p and r is 80 kilometers Q is in the west of P and R is in the south of P. Okay, what is the distance between Q and R? Fine, so first of all use this information. Q is in the west of P and R is in the south of P, right? So let's say this is P, right? So north, south, east and west, right? So Q is in the west of P, right? And R is in the south of P. So R is in the south. So this is what? This is the uh, distance between PQ is 60 and PR is 80, right? So distance between Q and R is this, right? We need to find this distance. So just by use Pythagoras theorem, just by using Pythagoras theorem, we can find this distance. So 60 square plus 80 square to the root, right? Which is equal to what? 100 square. So 100, right? So the correct answer is. 100 right everyone so the answer is d option 100 kilometers right d option is the correct choice all right everyone fine now let's talk about the next question next question says all members of a club went to mumbai and stayed in hotel on the first day 80 percent went for the shopping and 50 percent went for sightseeing whereas 10 percent took rest in the hotel which of the following conclusions can be drawn from the above data Okay, everyone, total 100% people were there, 10% didn't go anywhere, they took rest in the hotel. So, the left is 90%, right? And 80% went for shopping, 50% went for sightseeing, right? This total becomes 130%, right? And total we have 90% with us, so 130% minus 90% is equal to 40% are the like are those who went for both the places right i mean shopping as well as sightseeing right so when diagram is like this 40 percent and shopping okay and here it is sightseeing right okay so shopping total 80 percent are there so 40 percent already came so 40 percent left Sightseeing 50% uh, should be coming in this oval. So 40% already there, 10% are left, right? So what is the question? Question is, uh, question is which of the following conclusions can be drawn from the above data? All right. Conclusion number one, 40% member went for shopping as well as sightseeing. Okay, correct. Right. This 40% went for shopping as well as sightseeing. This is correct. Number two. 20% member went for only shopping. 20% member went for only shopping. No, 40% went for only shopping, right? 40% went for only shopping, right? So, first one only is the correct one, right everybody? First choice is the correct choice. Okay, now let's talk about the next question. Next question says, in a school, 60% students play cricket. A student who does not play cricket plays football. Every football player has got a two-wheeler. Which of the following conclusions cannot be drawn from the above data? Okay, 
60 percent of the student do not have two wheeler see everyone question is saying every football player has got a two wheeler every football player has got a two wheeler it does not mean that a cricket player has no two wheeler right so this conclusion cannot be drawn actually right now no cricketer has a two wheeler this also cannot be drawn right cricket players do not play football question is saying a student who does not play cricket plays football but it does not mean that a student who plays cricket cannot be playing football or a student who plays cricket cannot uh, is not playing football right so this statement also cannot be drawn right question is saying which of the statement cannot be drawn so all the three statements cannot be drawn right so the correct answer is d okay now let's talk about the next question. Next question is the ratio of a two digit natural number to a number formed by reversing its digit is four is to seven. Okay. The number of such pairs is everybody. The concept behind this question is what difference between a two digit number difference between a two digit number and reverse of it. is always a multiple of 9 is always a multiple of 9 for example if a two digit number is x y and we are subtracting y x from it then what we are getting is 9 mod x minus y right so x y minus y x is equal to 9 mod x minus y for example if we have 52 and we are subtracting 25 from it then the resultant is what 9 into 5 minus 2 so which is 9 into 3 that is 27 all right everyone so 52 minus 25 is 27 another example 81 minus 18 so this is 9 into difference of 8 and 1 is what 7 so 9 into 7 which is 63 all right so now let's talk about the question the ratio of a two digit natural number to a number formed by reversing its digit is 4 is to 7 right so the ratio is so let's say the number are 4x and 7x right so this is original number and this is reversed right difference is what difference is 3x okay so we all know the difference is a multiple of 9 so let's say it is 9 it may be 18 it may be 27 it may be 36 or it may be 45 and so on right so 3x is equal to if it is 9 then x is what x is x is 3 or if it is 18 then x is what x is 6 if it is 27 then x is what x is 9 if it is 36 then x is what x is 12 if it is 45 then x is what x is 15 and so on right so numbers are what numbers are 4x and 7x right so now just put the values of x so if x is 3 if x is 3 then 4x is 12 and 7x is 21 if x is 6 then 4x is 24 and x is 42 if x is 9 then 4x is 36 and 7x is 63 if x is 12 then 4x is 48 and 7x is 84 if x is 15 right if x is 15 then 4x is 60 and 7x is what 105 so this is not possible because 105 is not a two digit number right so x cannot be 15 right so x cannot be more than 12 okay everyone x cannot be more than 12 right so now how many pairs do we have 12 21 24 42 36 63 48 and 84 right so we have actually four such pairs where the natural number and the reverse of it are in the ratio 4 is to 7 right everybody the correct answer is b option four such pairs are there right okay first question says in an examination a has scored 20 marks more than b so difference between a and b is 20 marks right if b has scored 5 percent marks less than a right b has scored 5 percent less marks than a it means what 
five percent is equal to twenty marks. Right, five percent of A. In fact, I should be very precise. Five percent of A is equal to twenty. So one percent of A is equal to what four? Then hundred percent of A is equal to what four hundred? Right. So A is scoring four hundred, and B is scoring what twenty marks less. So obviously three eighty. Right. So here B is scoring three eighty marks. Right. This is a very simple question. B option is the right one. Okay. Very simple question. Okay, everyone. Now let's talk about the next question. Next question says, Sita and Geeta go for a swim after a gap of every two days and every three days, respectively. Okay, if on first January both of them went for a swim together. All right. So on first January, Sita and Geeta. Both of them are going for swim together, right? So if Sita is going on first, so Sita is going on first, and Geeta is also going on first, right? So Sita is going after a gap of every two days. So second and third she will not go. So she will be going on fourth. Then fifth and sixth she will not be going. She will be going on seventh. Then she will be going on like eighth and ninth. She will be not going. She will be going on tenth. And after that, she will not going eleven, twelfth. She will be going on thirtieth. Sorry, thirteenth, right? And now she will be going on sixteenth, and then nineteenth, and so on, right? Now, what about Geeta? Geeta is going after a gap of every three days. So on first she went, then obviously second, third, fourth she will not be going. She will be going on fifth, right? Then sixth, seventh, eighth she will not be not be going. She will be going on ninth. And then tenth, eleventh, twelfth, she will be not going. She will be going on thirteenth, right, everyone? So, what is the question? On first January, both of them went together for the swim. When they will go together next? So, together next, they will be going on thirteenth, right, everyone? So, on thirteenth, they will be going together for the next time, right? Fine. This is a very simple question based on a layperson's approach, right? Everybody should solve this question in the examination, right? Please don't leave these type of questions at least, right? Now let's talk about the next question. Okay, X, Y, Z are the three contestants in a race of one thousand meter. Assume that all run with different uniform speeds. X gives Y a start of forty meters, and X gives Z a start of sixty-four meter. If Y and Z were to compete in a race of one thousand meter. How many meters start will y give to z? Right, x gives y a start of 40 meter. Everyone, x gives y a start of 40 meters. It means what? It means x gives y a start of 40 meter. It means x runs for 1000 meter. I mean, the time required for x to run 1000 meter is equivalent to the time required for y to run 960 meter. I repeat. The time in which X is running 1,000 meter in the same time Y is running only 960 meters. X gives Y a start of 40 meters means this, right? Okay. Now the second condition X gives Z a start of 64 meters. X gives Z a start of 64 meters means when X runs 1,000 meters, Y sorry Z can only run 936 meters. I mean 64 meters less, right? So this is the Meaning of this x gives z a start of 64 meters, right? So obviously, x is to y is to z is equal to 100. Sorry, 1000 is to 960 is to 936, right? Okay, 1000 is to 960 is to 936, right? Now, question is saying about y and z. Fine, everyone. So what is the ratio of y and z? So y and z 960 is to 936. 960 and 936 both the numbers are divisible by 24. So 24 into 40 and 24 into 39, right? So this is the ratio of y and z. When y is running 40 units, z can only run 39 units, right? This is the ratio. Now the question is, if y and z were to compete in a race of 1000 meter, so y is running 1000 meter, right? 
so 1000 meter means what this is actually 25 times of 40 so 25 into 40 is equal to 1000 so 25 into 39 we need to find so 25 into 39 is 975 right so when y is running 100 meters z is only running 975 meter right so difference between these two is what 25 meters right so y can give a start of 25 meter to z this is the answer right everyone the answer is 25 meter correct now let's talk about the next one okay next question says if x is greater than or equal to 25 all right so just assume that x is greater than or equal to 25 just assume x as 30 fine y is less than or equal to 40 so just assume y is equal to again 30 right i repeat question is saying x is greater than or equal to 25 so just assume x is 30 y is less than or equal to 40 so y is again 30 just assume now let's talk about the option then which of the following is always correct okay x is greater than y no we have assumed both 30 so x is not greater than y x is equal to y now y minus x is greater than 15 y minus x is greater than 15 no this is equal to 0 y minus x is less than or equal to 15 this may be correct wait now x plus y is greater than or equal to 65 x plus y is not greater than 65 it is less than 65 this is also not correct so if three of them are not correct then fourth one is obviously correct right so c option is the correct choice okay everyone it's a very very simple question right all right now let's move to the next one question says Anna born four years after her parents marriage her mother is three years younger than her father and 24 years older than Anna who is 13 years old at what age did Anna's father get married okay so let's say the mother and father and Anna right so at the time of marriage and after four years of marriage after four years of marriage right and present okay so question is saying at present Anna is 13 years old right so at present Anna is 13 years old right so Anna's mother is 24 years older than Anna so 24 plus 13 is what 37 right and Anna's mother is three years younger than her father it means three years older her father is from like to his mother so 37 plus 3 is 40 so at present Anna is 13 years old her mother is 37 years old and her father is 40 years old right so after four years of marriage everyone after four years of marriage Anna born so it means Anna was zero at that time so we are talking about 13 years behind from now right 13 years ago from now right so 13 years ago her mother must be what 37 minus 13 which is 24 right and father must be 27 right and four years ago they got married because Anna was born four years after the marriage so four years ago they born they got married right so 27 minus 4 is 23 24 minus 3 uh, 24 minus 4 is 20 and Anna was not there right okay so at the time of marriage her mother was 20 years old and her father was 23 years old right now what is the question at what age did Anna's father get married so obviously the answer is 23 years right it's a very simple question just based on thinking only right don't use any formula to solve this question just use your common sense right all right now let's talk about the next question okay next question says Rakesh had money to buy eight mobile handsets of a specific company but the retailer offered a very good discount on that particular handset Rakesh could buy 10 mobile handsets with the amount he had what was the discount the retailer offered okay 8 and 10 just take the LCM of 8 and 10 which is what which is 40 right so just assume that he had 40 rupees with him right and here if for rupees 40 he could buy 8 handsets then it was 5 rupees each 
right earlier it was the earlier right and this was the situation after discount right this was the situation after discount and here every mobile was 4 rupees fine so obviously without discount it was costing 5 rupees each and after discount it was costing 4 rupees each right everybody fine so uh, uh, initial like mrp is mrp is 5 rupees and after discount so discount is what discount is discount offered is like 1 rupee fine because after discount it is of 4 rupees fine so what percentage of discount so percentage of discount is 1 by 5 into 100 right so this is 20 percent discount okay everyone so it is 20 percent discount fine it is a very simple question right everyone just based on common sense nothing else right nothing else though you can categorize this question under profit and loss category but i think this question based on the common sense only all right now let's talk about the next question okay the average marks of 100 students are given to be 40 it was found later that marks of one student were 53 which were misread as 83 okay the corrected mean marks are see everyone 53 misread as 83 right so it means after the correction we will make it 53 again so if 183 I, I mean if one entry which is 83 will be make will be made 53 then obviously the total will be subtracted by 30 right okay total will be subtracted by 30 right so this minus 30 will be distributed among all the hundred student so obviously every student will get minus 0.3 right so initial average was 40 then the final average will be 40 minus 0.3 so this will be 39.7 right everyone so everybody will uh, I mean the average marks are now 39.7 because minus 0.3 will be distributed among all the students right okay fine now let's talk about the next question all right next question is read the following statements s1 and s2 and the answer two items that follow okay Twice the weight of Sohan is less than the weight of Mohan or that of Rohan. Okay. Twice the weight of, yes, statement number S1, right? So twice the weight of Sohan is less than the weight of Mohan or that of Rohan. Statement S1. Now S2 is saying what? Twice the weight of Rohan is greater than the weight of Mohan or that of Sohan okay fine so now let us assume that Sohan is 1 Mohan is let's say let's say mm, let's say 5 and let's say Sohan uh, Rohan Rohan let's say 100 right okay so from the first statement this data I am using for first statement only, right? This data I am using for first statement only, right? So twice the weight of Sohan is less than that of Mohan and twice the weight of Sohan is less than that of Rohan. Fine. Okay. Mm, right. Now for the second statement, I am taking as Sohan as let's say 10 Mohan as let's say 15 and Rohan as 8 fine so now the second statement twice the weight of Rohan is greater than Mohan okay twice the weight of Rohan is greater than Sohan right so everyone actually from these two statements we cannot conclude right uh, like uh, whose weight is the greatest and whose weight is the least question is which of the following statement is correct weight of Mohan is greatest that can't be concluded from the given two statements right in fact you know uh, the answer will be uh, which one will be the answer the answer is that number which will be satisfying all the statements together right so here none of the value is satisfying the state all the statements given here so weight of Mohan is greatest no 
because here the weight of Mohan is less than the weight of Rohan. Weight of Sohan is greatest? No. Weight of Rohan is greatest? No. Whose weight is the greatest cannot be determined. Yes, this is the correct answer. And in fact, whose weight is least? That also cannot be determined. So next question is, I guess, wahi hai. Whose weight is the least? So whose weight is the least? That also cannot be determined. So D option is the right one. Okay, so let's talk about the next question. This video is over everyone. Hope you enjoyed the session. And this was really a good question paper. I also enjoyed solving it. So thank you so very much. Thanks for watching everyone. Thank you.